This patient complained of significant postoperative light sensitivity and glare, and one can note in the temporal iris the area of translumination defects and iris thinning in the area that was the temporal uh, subcisional iris initially. Um, the plan here is to uh, insert an in-the-bag uh, iris prosthesis to cover the area of the defect, and first we're going to viscodissect open the capsular bag. In this case, pushing down on the optic simply with a Sinsky and injecting with a cohesive viscoelastic helps to separate the anterior capsule from the optic uh, edge itself. And when we'll do this um, in the uh, initially in here, the inferior quadrant, and then inject uh, along the haptic itself here nasally, it's very important to free up that uh, haptic on either side to ensure mobility. One can then note we see that the nasal haptic is now freed up and brought up out of the capsular bag here into the anterior chamber. Uh, one must do this with great care. If the capsular bag uh, and fibrosis appears to be significant, one needs to viscodissect further or cut the haptic and uh, remove the optic. Here the uh, temporal haptic is now uh, extracted from the capsular fornix and rotated around. And again, the viscodissection with manual separation as well with the cannula helps to do this. This is the uh, iris sector shield type 96F from Morcher. You see where we're going to be planning on placing this. Uh, with the eye well now in the anterior chamber, we'll inject this uh, iris prosthesis sector shield into the capsular bag very carefully after it's been filled with viscoelastic. And using a Sinsky uh, Kuglin here, and in this case a uh, curved tire, we slowly rotate the prosthesis into the capsular bag. The Sinsky helps to finish it off by placing that trailing uh, fixation eyelet into the capsular bag. And now we're happy with that position. We can put the eye well now back into the capsular bag carefully here, placing each haptic into the capsular uh, bag, both in this case superiorly and inferiorly. It helps to keep the haptics uh, about 90 degrees away from the sector shield uh, just to prevent tilt. And in this case, the eye well is going to be placed behind the iris prosthesis, although it can be placed anteriorly as well as long as it stays within the capsular bag. So now we see the prosthesis in position here, uh, covering, uh, placed behind the transluminate defects, covering the iris uh, defect nicely here, and uh, hopefully here preventing the stray light from entering the eye and causing uh, discomfort. An alternate strategy would have been to suture the iris in the area of the defect, although in this case we didn't have to touch the iris and simply reopen the capsular bag, uh, atraumatically placing the iris prosthesis uh, in front of the IOL.